Yo, what's up, man? How are you? Yeah, JP, Mitch, how are you guys? Sorry, You're doing good, man. To security, security at LAX. Sincere apologies, dude. All good, all right, man. We, we, we understand that. Yeah. <laughs> all hey, good. You don't have to say security. It's LAX. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How are you guys? Uh, Everything good? We oh, are yeah. doing well, man. We are doing well. I imagine you got to be kind of excited to to come back home this weekend. Um, I am very, very, very excited. Because, uh, yeah, man, this is like little kid's dream come true. Are you kidding me? Like, grow up there, get to come home, get to go to, what do we call it now? Northwest. Northwest, Northwest Stadium. Yeah, That's Northwest, right. exactly. Uh, sorry, guys, taking my air buds out. This works a lot better. Um, dude, I'm excited. Like, for those who don't know, I, I, I grew up at Reston, went to South Lake, but my dad's from Cleveland, so we were raised Browns fans, even though the Skins back then are winning Super Bowl, you know, every other week. And, um, we we're supposed to root for them, and we did. But my dad made us Browns fans, so like this is like the coolest thing of all time, honestly. So family's going to be there, get to come home, uh, and hopefully get to have a good game. You know, yeah. hopefully this is a good one. What, so, what's been your perception of uh, what's been going on here with Jaden Daniels? Honestly, um, I couldn't be happier for the fan base and for everyone that's kind of been wandering through the football desert for the last twenty years. Um, I think it's it's kind of like what we had here in L.A. I've been here 25 years now. And when I got here, I realized we kind of lost a whole generation of fans between like 2000 and, and, and 17 or 16 when the Rams and the Chargers came back because like you had this entire generation that didn't have a team to root for. And they just watched fantasy football on Sunday ticket. And I realized that's an extreme. That's not exactly what we had there. But you had enough apathy right where you you kind of lost your generation you know kids played fantasy football didn't root for the hometown team and now Jaden Daniels and look I know we went through this in 2012 with RG3 briefly um and this kind of sort of feels like that but I think this has a lot more staying power and what Jaden is doing is historic don't want to get too excited it's only four weeks but you guys have seen it firsthand it's not just the play but it's the attitude it's the leadership it's everything else he brings in and out of the building um it's it's special and you know it's exactly what this team and this town needs it it really is man it's been like we did an hour of calls of how confident people are and and you know well enough that folks in this town generally ain't that confident about the old burgundy and gold and it is changing man it, it, it's changing now it's changing fast it's changing before our eyes but dude i i want to lean on i mean all the work you're doing with the browns now you know the Browns, and that defense was excellent last year. They're still good, but it, it doesn't seem to be the same as it looked last season. What What's coming to town in this Cleveland team? You know, it's a good question. The defense is still good, and they have still had plenty of great moments, particularly in the second half. Like, you look what they did second half week one against the Cowboys. Now, granted, they gave up a couple of explosives in the first half. Second half, they shut them down, and in that game, the Cowboys had four field goal drives that totaled I think 50 yards Um, in the second half against the Giants. Yes, Malik neighbors and those points still count. And that's the issue. Yes, Malik neighbors had two touchdowns in the first half of the second half. They totally shut them down. Um, And the same last week goes for the Raiders. For the most part in the fourth quarter, they kept getting off the field, shutting them down. But the problem is the offense hasn't done enough. After the first drive, they, they have a they have points. I know the commanders, 16 straight drives. That's amazing. Yay. They're not there. The Browns aren't there. But they do have scoring drives on their opening drive in all five games. Last week, opening drive, they went 15 plays, 70 yards, took nine and a half off the clock. That's right. absurd. But after that opening drive, they got nothing. Um, and the defense, or rather the offense, goes to sleep in the second and third quarter. Um fourth quarter they've had chances each of the last two weeks both the Raiders and the Giants had essence handed them the game in each of the last two weeks in the fourth quarter and the offense couldn't do anything um, now they had an 82 yard touchdown call back last week on a highly suspect holding call so if you pretend that didn't happen then well you can't but if you did then yeah Deshaun Watson by far played his best game at a Browns uniform and uh, things are looking up but they need the defense to create turnovers score points and give them short fields more often than they're doing. Is, is it a dependence on the defense more than the offense being able to just hold their points? Um, no, so far it's on the offense, Brian. Like, if you look at the numbers, um, I mean, they're at the bottom of the league in, in at least the last, the bottom three or four in a whole bunch of categories. 
Um, the offensive efficiency isn't there. Third down isn't there. Um, first down, I mean, they're rushing for only three yards. No, it, it, the, the, the problem right now is offense. And the problem for a, a huge part of it is the offensive line. Um, they've been just destroyed by injuries on the offensive line. It's a, it's a rotating door every week as to who's coming in and who's coming out. Um, and regardless of who is playing on the O-line, and I, I think they're getting healthier this week, it, they're having a, a lot of trouble picking up simple games, stunts, twists, any games up front, and teams are blitzing them to death, and, and they're getting to Deshaun on the money downs. And that's a massive issue. People want to give Deshaun grief for not at least throwing the ball into the end zone on fourth and three last week with the game on the line. Christian Wilkins beats a rookie right guard off the line at the snap and blows the play up. you got to give him some credit as well. Um. What is the latest? We're talking with our friend Andrew Siciliano. You can listen to him this weekend calling the game for the Browns radio network. Um, obviously, we all watched Andrew do direct TV red zone channel for years and years and years. Um, dude, what's the deal with Nick Chubb? Do you think he's playing this week? Is it is it still too early in that process? Yeah, I think it's too early. I, I don't know for certain. Um, Stefanski talks within the next hour. Um, I'd be very surprised if he plays this week. They open the window Wednesday. So his first practice was, you know, 48 hours ago. I'd be stunned if he's out there this week. I, I wouldn't be that surprised if he's out there next week. But they're not going to open up that 21-day window um, unless they think that he is close. Um, but I think the emotional lift he gave this team this week in the building cannot be overstated you know what is that worth on sunday that remains to be seen but um he is um citizen number one and fan favorite number one um he can do no wrong and his work ethic and his understated energy um changes a lot for that team i bet i bet and, and obviously as good of a player as chubb is arguably the best defensive player in football is on that browns d line um, where is Miles Garrett? I, I know he's been on the injury report. I also know he had two sacks last week. After, yeah, um, after being on it. <laughs> right. Where is Garrett's game right now, and how big of a threat is he Sunday? He's as big of a threat as he's ever been, and he's got three injuries. What I think we're calling it foot, thigh, and Achilles, or foot, thigh, and ankle. I can't remember. Mm. Um, he has four sacks, and he's a force. Um, and I think the frustrating part about that 82 yard touchdown call back last week when they got the center Nick Harris on a hold is that Miles Garrett is held probably five to six times in far more egregious fashion every game that is not called. Uh, he's held on every play, especially on every third down. Um, he still has four sacks and he is playing uh, with multiple injuries, including an injury to his feet. He, he had childhood foot issues. He had surgery as a kid on, on his feet and, and, that's kind of now coming full circle where he may have to do something again after the season. Um, he's practicing pretty much one day a week and then going out there and uh, toughing it out and still, you know, getting PFF grades for whatever that's worth of 90 seemingly every week. So he's <laughs> still the guy. That's, How's the secondary in uh, Cleveland? Well, I mean, they're, they're missing Juan Thornhill, the safety who got hurt week one, who, who probably played the former chief uh, the UVA guy who probably played his best game as a Brown week one against the Cowboys. And uh, we haven't seen him since he's probably back in a week or two. I'm, I'm just guessing uh, it was a calf. Um, look, they have three excellent corners. Um, they would argue they have the three that or the, the best trio of corners in the NFL with Denzel Ward and Greg Newsom and uh, Martin Emerson, MJ Emerson. Um, Emerson's been picked out a little bit the last two weeks. Um, he is a long physical dude who for example has had great games against Mike Evans right great games against Jamar Chase that's mm -hmm. his game that's why you have him um, Malik Neighbors gave him some trouble um, little speedy guys like Trey Tucker gave him some trouble last week um, but you know for the most part they think those three dudes are dudes but they miss Juan Thornhill Thornhill's a good player but I mean Ward is so good uh, flip it to the other side of the field for us Cooper and Judy Deshaun has, Watson hasn't really gotten it going much, but you know I, I do think, he, although they were better last week, the commander's secondary is quite beatable. What's the health and the status? Kind of is Njoku back? 
Like, what is the what is the threat level of this Browns aerial attack? So, uh, Njoku will know again in an hour. He practiced Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday. So, we'll see. Honestly, I have no read on that one. Um, the offense is better with him, period. Um, especially, look, it, the offense is a bit different this year with Ken Dorsey, but in, in the Stefanski, I don't want to call it pure Shanahan system, but, you know, everything runs to the tight end, so everything is better when he is out there. Amari Cooper is still Amari Cooper, but he's got a lot of drops, and he has been an issue this year. Not an issue like he's some kind of malcontent who's bringing the team down, but he and Deshaun have not gotten on the same page. They've said that repeatedly. Um, when last uh, Deshaun Watson and Amari Cooper were at FedEx, he had a couple of touchdowns. I think it was a Week 18 game a few years ago, and Deshaun had come back late in the year after the suspension. Um, I was watching some of that this morning, and we haven't seen those 15, 20-yard in cuts and those deep shots downfield from him last this year. We simply haven't. Um, last week, he had a 30-yard ball in his hands on his chest at the 30-yard line in the fourth quarter that would have changed the game. The Browns probably win. It was one of Deshaun's better balls of the season. And it bounced right off his hands, up into the air. Trayvon Merrick picked it off, took it back to midfield. Six plays later, the Raiders scored. Um, it hasn't worked yet, necessarily. But yet he has two touchdowns, which is the team high. Jerry Judy has been great. Everybody gave them grief when they traded for and then paid Jerry Judy. In retrospect, the contract that they gave him was before all the other receiver deals mm-hmm. blew up this summer and looks like a bargain in retrospect. So, so uh, Deshaun, what, 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 what were you – he gives all the blame. We know that. But is it him not being what he was or he's not getting enough help? Um, I think, honestly, it, it's a lot, Brian. I think a lot goes back to the O-line as well, and I'm not blaming the O-line because you go back and you look at some tape and you're like, all right, how does Deshaun not see that? He's got to rip that one. Um, but uh, the O-line, just the injuries, it's been a mess from, from day one, whether it's not having uh, Jed Wills back or not having Jack Conklin back, but then they do come back and then that last five minutes because you get hurt again, or Dewan Jones, who is toughing it out, who was all rookie team at right tackle last year. Um, you know, he had off-season knee surgery as well. He comes back. He's ready to go week one. But clearly, the knee's not right, and he's a bigger dude. So, um, you know, it's a lot of weight being carried around on that knee, struggling at pass pro. Um, you're working at a new offense where Stefanski and Ken Dorsey try to get on the same page together. And I think it looks good, but you're going a lot, a lot empty, five wide, no one to help this offensive line that's struggling with injuries. So it, it's been a challenge, let's put it that way. But, of course, as you know, the quarterback always gets the play. Yeah, I mean, the Watson thing has just become so bizarre at, at, at this point. I mean, losing Wyatt Teller has to be a huge situation, right? I'm sorry, say that again, JP. Didn't they lose Teller? To, didn't he have to go to IR also? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Virginia Tech's Wyatt. I'm sorry, some, some, someone just walked by. Um, Wyatt Teller, yeah. Uh, he's He's got an MCL. Uh, he got hurt against the Giants, and that really – I mean, that, that, that turned everything you do like chaos emergency when, when he left and then you had your center lead. Now your center get banged up and he, anyway, I, I won't bore you with the O-line issues, but at that point you had Joel Batonio playing left tackle. You had your center playing left guard, you had your backup center playing center. You had a rookie playing right guard. And then you had your right tackle who had left the game injured, forced back onto the field because they had no body. Left. Jeez. <laughs> and that was all, all dominoes that kind of started when Wyatt Teller got hurt in that game. So mm. he is not there. Um, and again, you have Zach Zinner, who who the Browns love, you know, third round pick out of Michigan, who was playing great last year for the national champions before he broke his leg against Ohio State. Um, they took him as more of a developmental pick, comes back off the injury. Um, in Jacksonville week two, they use him as the sixth offensive lineman, use him in jumbo sets, really at the tight end. Um, and it worked great, but then they, they forced him to start um, with a teller injury. It's It's, you know, he's getting there, but they probably didn't, you know, see him starting key road games in September as a rookie. Hey, man, I really appreciate you making time appreciate for us. I know Andrew. you're traveling and a busy fella. And I'll see you Sunday, man. That'll be fun. I am looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to beautiful weather. And, uh, yeah, it's good to be back home, guys. Can't wait to see you. All right, man. Thank Take you. Care. Andrew Siciliano. Follow him on Twitter. I sent some stuff out. You can find it. It's S-I-C-I-L-L-I-A-N-O.